Hi, I'm Dave, you're watching Make For Others, and in this episode, we're making a custom, one-of-a-kind Star Wars Boba Fett t-shirt for my friend George. I've been working on a Star Wars Boba Fett helmet for my friend George, and while I'm pretty sure he's gonna wear it a lot, there may be places where he just can't, like a work meeting or a wedding. So I wanted to make him something for those times, and a t-shirt seemed like a great way to go. But not just any t-shirt, no. It was gonna be a green t-shirt with red ink, like the main colors of Boba Fett. Not to mention, that is a great color combination for almost any situation. First thing I did was take a reference picture of George's helmet to use. The photo got taken into Adobe Illustrator, and I turned most of the distinguishing characteristics into lines. I combined those lines in different ways until ending up with the simplest shapes that would resemble a Boba Fett helmet. This part was a lot of fun. George's absolute favorite band is Rush. So I used the font they use for their logo for the Boba George on his shirt. Once that was finished, I did a test of the design by cutting it out on the cardstock with my cutter. I like to do tests of things before moving on to the final, since there's usually a difference between seeing something on screen and holding it in your hand. Like every single fast food burger I've ever eaten. Hmm, sadness. Some of the spacing needed to be adjusted because of the screen printing technique I was gonna be using. After marking up the physical test and making changes to the design, I then had it cut onto vinyl. This type of vinyl has a self-adhesive back, which makes connecting it to the screen really easy. Some of the cuts weren't perfect, so I did a few fixes with an X-Acto blade. Then I cut out enough screen material to insert into the hoop that was a little bit bigger than the shirt design. After tightening the hoop a bit, I stretched out the screen as much as possible, tightening the hoop more, and then repeating. The goal was to get the screen as stretched out and as flat as possible. Like when you put a piece of bacon down into the pan for the first time. Bacon. After making the measurements and cuts to have the vinyl fit inside the hoop, a piece of transfer tape got cut so the vinyl could be taken off its original backing and put onto the hoop screen without stretching out the vinyl or moving any of it around. This transfer tape had a medium tack some people call it stickiness. Because if it was too tacky or sticky, the vinyl would get damaged. After pressing down a bunch to make sure the vinyl and screen were connected, the transfer tape got slowly pulled away so the vinyl and screen wouldn't get damaged. The screen around the vinyl got covered in duct tape so ink could only get through where it was supposed to go. And it also gives the screen a little bit more structure. You can see some areas where the vinyl hadn't completely connected with the screen, so I pressed and held those areas more. An old shirt got used to do some tests, since this design was the most complicated one I'd done with this technique. Scraping the ink over the screen like printers do with a typical shirt screen didn't work out that great with this design, at least for me. Some of the smaller details like the two triangles above the visor got scraped away and lost. But it didn't seem to make that big of a difference with the design, so I wasn't worried about it. If you can take an element away from a design and it still looks good, it was worth taking away. When cleaning the screen, I was careful to keep it facing down so the water pressure wouldn't separate the vinyl from the screen. At this point, you may be thinking this technique isn't that great. And if you're printing a complicated design on a lot of shirts with a lot of colors, you'd be right. But I'm just doing one shirt with one color. Try it again, but this time used a foam brush. The straight up and down worked better, but it still wasn't as good as it could be. After another rinse and repeat, I tried again and pushed down more times over the whole design. Some areas still weren't great, so I tried just painting straight onto the shirt. This actually worked out pretty well because of the shirt design. Boba Fett is a tough, no nonsense, living on the edge of society bounty hunter. Exactly like George, except for the part about loving Rush music. So a textured and perfect ink job on the shirt fits. After another rinse and repeat, it was time for the final shirt. I mixed the red and black screen printing inks to get a color close to Boba Fett's, but didn't mix the colors completely so there would be some color variation. Did a double dab on the screen print to make sure it all got covered, pulled away the screen while almost getting my friendship bracelet in the fresh ink, and then went in to tweak some details with a small brush. Still wanted to keep the imperfect rough feel of the ink, so I didn't fill everything in. It dried overnight, and the next day, I used a sheet of parchment paper and a hot iron to set the ink. Your ink may have different requirements, so definitely read the instructions before doing your thing. After about four minutes, the ink was set and the shirt was ready to go. Now, I'm pretty happy with how this turned out. 
Uh, it isn't the technique I go with for every situation, but if you don't have much time, you have a simple design, and you only need to make one or two, this is the way to go. Otherwise, I'd probably recommend making a silk screen. If you learn something new or encouraged to make something for someone else or, or just have questions, leave a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.